So uh, tonight's goal is to talk about, um, do a little retrospective look at last year's goals. Um, actually, um, the goals and outcomes and actions and kind of try to assess where we ended the year. Um, then also, um, then to take a look at the work that's been done so far um, for this year and try to come up with measurable goals all within a two-hour period. Um, or at least have significant work done so that we can then close this out maybe with a follow-up workshop before one of our meetings to finalize that. So our goal tonight is go um, until about 7 o'clock. And so uh, there are really four items for tonight's agenda. Uh, the first, and I apologize for the screen, by the way, but the screen is actually uh, not adjustable. So there's going to be some cutoffs both on the sides as well as on the, the, the length. So we'll work through those as much as we can. Uh, first is, as I mentioned, review 2015 goals and acknowledge our outcomes. Look at the process outlined for this year, review our group input, and then define a goal statement, approve our outcomes, actions, and set metrics to that. Um, so just as a high-level overview, and, and you, know, you were chair last year, so you can provide any clarity, but last year, um, just to recap, what we had done was that we actually had hired a consulting group, uh, I think it was called Delphi Group. Uh, they came in, uh, John and Dana came in and uh, facilitated two sessions for us um, in which we came up with this process here. Um, I got some feedback from you about how you wanted to approach it this year, somewhat similarly as last year. Um, however, when we sat down with the Delphi group to see whether or not we really needed them to come in and help us uh, this year, um, Tom and I uh, thought that uh, one of the growth areas for this council and for us is that we should be able to manage that process on our own um, so that we don't need to hire a consultant every year to facilitate a goal session. So this is kind of our first time of doing that. Um, and I'll explain kind of the process that was undertaken that followed very similarly to last year. Um, at the high level, there were three goals. Um, very short statements in those goals. Um, and, and you'll see it in the presentation. The first goal was to improve internal communication. The second goal was to improve external communications. And the third goal was to further enhance financial management. And what we did is then we um, identified outcomes and actions for each one of those goals um, and what we wanted to use as measurement. Um, one of the things that we didn't quite successfully complete last year, which I think that you'll see um, is where we need to move this year, is that we didn't really have substantive um, quantifiable metrics um, that matched up with how we would then agree to measuring whether we were successful or not. There's a couple in here that are quantifiable. So as an example, in this first one for improved internal communications, the one-on-one -on -one meetings between councils is, is, is an identifiable, quantifiable measure. Um, however, uh, uh, fleshing out norms and practices from the retreat is more qualitative, um, and there wasn't any action with that. So, our goal here is that I'd like to go through not necessarily every one of these individually, because um, you can read um, as well as I can. Um, and by the way, this is being, as you know, that's being taped and it will be shown, the workshop will be shown on cable television as well. Um, is to go through each of the goals and, and see at the end if we are comfortable in assessing. Um, I put up here uh, red, yellow, uh, red, yellow, green. We can use any type of metrics that you want. I just picked something that was easiest uh, to understand. Um, and I did not provide definitions around what they are because I think individually you can do that on your own without necessarily having a consensus within that, um, within that definition itself. So um, with that, I'm just going to open it. My goal is to really take some notes. Um, we can facilitate. I don't think I need to facilitate this like a normal council meeting because it is a, a working workshop. Uh, so I would like to start off. Um, first, any questions from, from you about um, last year? Any recall? I know Katie, you're new, but I mean everybody else was here for last year. Anything that you'd like to add from last year for this year? All right. So um, if we can go, and, and by the way, um, this actually, um, I've scheduled uh, this review of the past uh, to last no more than an hour. Really, it's going to be maybe 45 minutes, half an hour. Um, so the first goal last year was to improve internal communications. And we had our outcomes and our actions. Um, the question I have to you is how would you either rate this or do you have any comments regarding the goal that was set? And keep in mind, this exercise is evaluating everything on a uh, council, cal council year, which is from November to November. Right? 
So you're asking, <coughs> excuse me, um, so you're asking, you want our opinion on where we feel we stand at this level on this goal? For last year. For last year. Yes. Not moving forward for Correct. now. That will be, that will come in the second part of the, of the workshop. Okay. All right. Um, oh, yeah. You go first. Go. I'll go after you. No, go ahead. No. I mean, I was going to say, I think, you know, I think last year, you know, I think it was a great goal. I think it's still kind of a work in progress. I, I think at times we, we did really well. I think at other times, you know, there were some real opportunities to improve what we did. So overall assessment, I, I probably put us in the yellow. You know, I, I think we nailed it at some times. I think other times we didn't. I think it's, it should be a work in progress and something we still work on. I would, yeah. I would agree. I would agree with that. Um, I think we have really missed the ball a couple times. Um, I think we've all been in situations. I think every single one, well, not to speak for everybody, but I myself have been in situations where I've been caught off guard last year, um, where I didn't know something that was happening that was kind of on my scale a relatively big deal, um, and other counselors knew about it, and then for me not to know about it, it's embarrassing. Um, and so I think there has to be, personally, I think this can't, can't leave as our goal. I think we have a long way to go with this. Long way. Um, by the way, Katie, I did want to mention that you know, you, I hope that you contribute to the conversation because you're an outsider looking in, so I'd love to hear how you perceive us communicating internally if you didn't know anything. Well, I wouldn't well. know and internally, you, but I could. I could. Absolutely. Maybe come on the next one, but if I will, but it's really your yeah. time to review that yeah. stuff. I get it. Good. But thank you. Any other? Um, I'll add. Um, I'm actually, uh, so I'm a little bit of a linear thinker. So when I look at, um, and I try to check mark these off as being accomplished, there's very few that can be checked off. Um, however, I'm also, um, I also uh, understand and we observed a lot of these um, actually occurring without necessarily being um, measured on a regular basis and having some type of track. So as an example, I mean, I look at in communications, I look both internally and externally, I look at what I contribute to the process. I don't really look at you um, as my colleagues. I look at how I um, hopefully make it better. And so as you know, I mean, one of the things I took to heart was this one particular issue. And then, um, you know, I developed my one-on-one -on -one coffees with these um, and that was, you know, not as part of being chair. It was just, you know, try to develop a better relationship with, with all of you, both working and personally. And I thought that it uh, worked out very well. Uh, so I appreciate you guys being flexible and allowing that. I also think that um, Bill, you did a great job as our chair. Um, I, and that flows downward. Um, and I think that every, I think everyone really did work very well. But it's what contributed to what I think was a very successful year. So kind of mixed in between the green and yellow. I, I would tend to be a little bit green, not quite as green. I think when I look at the outcome, I see mostly green if we're no longer people. I think that the uh, you know the, the second and third bullet points were really specific to the uh, methodology that was used last year. If you recall the final I asked everybody in advance if there was like a survey thing and that's really kind of I think the goal was to if there was to be another survey to have the outcome uh, be closer so we could get to agreement. Um, I think some of the uh, some of the, the other uh, bullet points that we did a really good job on. I think we did have uh, robust and inclusive discussions about issues um, and we did have uh, not only we strive for but we had our conversations and I you could count on one hand and have several figures left over and the number of votes that we had that wasn't mm -hmm. unanimous. Some of them we didn't do as well on at times, but I think for the most part, we did a good job, and I'll agree that it's a work in progress. Can I just amend something real quick? You know, I think it's really important tonight to be extremely honest with how we're feeling about certain things. I think that certain groups of us communicate very well, and certain groups of us don't communicate very well. And I think that happens in probably most workforces. Um, Unfortunately, we are in the realm of having to, we have to communicate with each other. It's imperative for our town. 
Um, whereas some businesses, you know, they can get away with not talking to each other. Um, so I, and like you said, when you phrased it, Sean, it's it's on me. Like I, I'm, I'm talking about myself. I work better or feel more open with certain people because I feel as though I can trust them with what I'm saying and I'm not going to get jumped on or I'm not going to get reprimanded for my opinion. Um, there are other people that I don't, I, don't, I don't have that relationship with yet, but I hope to. So that's why for me this is such an important goal because for me personally, those are things I have to work on because like you said, if, if it starts with ourselves. If we're not willing to go there, then what good does it do? So. It wasn't my goal, but just an, obs uh, an observation, having sat with all of you through all of the trials and tribulations, the, the bullet there, the robust, inclusive discussion, I think was really a success that we should be proud of mm -hmm. working with hundreds of elected officials and dozens and dozens of groups of them. Uh, and uh, last year, I, as I think that was one of the more productive in that regard. And that only, that only makes your conversation with you and your decisions better, but it also an opportunity for the public to understand what you're thinking, what, why you're voting a certain way. And that certainly translates into your second goal of the external piece. Uh, do some workshops and build a uh, frankly an exception job. You might recall during discussion on just about any motion that was in front of the council, he would go up and down uh, the council table almost one by one and give everyone an opportunity. Oftentimes you passed. But prompting folks to, uh, to speak on the topic, I think we it's simple, but uh, clearly very effective, and I strongly encourage you to continue that same practice. I think the process is better for it. One thing you said to me when I very first started was, you said, and I, I'll never forget, in our very first meeting, you looked at me and said, you are to talk to your other counselors at council meetings. You're not here to, like, and I'm not I'm paraphrasing, but you're not here to necessarily address the audience, but you're here to talk to when you're sitting at that table, you want to be looking down the rows of other counselors because those are the people that you're trying to either win over with your argument or help understand where you know. So I think that's something that I definitely miss sometimes. I get nervous and start thinking that I forget that what I'm really here to do is talk to. What comes next is the vote. And right. So you're in discussion, formal discussion. I call it the lost art of debate and discussion. That's your, that's your opportunity to convince your colleagues of your position. Uh, and the next thing that comes is the vote that you want to make that. So don't use that opportunity as well as yeah, I thought uh, the goals workshop was much more valuable than I had thought it would be. Uh, I came out of that feeling as if, okay, we're really going to work because of, of some of the concerns that have been expressed by ourselves and the public. Civility was really important. And I just thought that everyone stepped up. It was a courtesy that I appreciated because no one got snippy or... And, and the debate, as the year went along, I think as a consequence of people feeling more comfortable that their voice will be heard, they, they, everyone opened up and talked more and was willing and it had a, a degree of informality that uh, allowed for that sort of discussion. Uh, um, that to me was the, the internal communications was around getting people to feel they knew each other, respected each other, and, and were prepared to come and work together. Uh, that, that was... Uh, I think the talking with everybody each uh, before each meeting was helpful, but probably not. Uh, I wouldn't put that as high uh, a uh, action item as just simply coming ready to be good counselors uh, at each meeting. Made, made, I thought made a, the big difference, and as a result, we kind of had virtual unanimity. On, on every matter that came before us. Those are the things that stuck out in my mind. Uh, work in progress, I think internal communications is always going to be probably uh, a, a number one or number two goal. Uh, and you're never going to necessarily 
stop having it be, because you never want to forget that uh, our ability to work through issues is always going to be better uh, if we have a respect for each other's opinions and reflect on it and think about it and say, why isn't that maybe something I should adopt? Regardless who it is who's putting forth that idea. So I, I pretty much concur with what everybody said. I'd like to, for us to try and make a commitment to revisit this though sometime in the summertime about midway through the session because I think we hit, we came out of the gate pretty strong and I, I just feel like as we went along we started to kind of lose some of that momentum and we didn't check in and we started doing a little bit more. The budget, we went through the budget and then some other issues started coming up where we, we got to do the work obviously. But I, I think it would be good for us maybe in the summertime when it's slow when we're down to one meeting a month or so or something, just set a retreat aside, pick a day, and revisit again midway and say, are we, just the check-in portion, are we doing what we should be doing, where can we do better, how can we, you know, across the board, not just for this one. But, um, I, so I think, I think I'd, I'd give us, a, you know, again, a yellow light, I think, like most other people, because it is, a, I agree, it's a work in progress. It's always, uh, it's always uh, something we need to be focused on, but I'd like to see a check back. If I recall, by the way, we did have a check-in last year, halfway through, didn't we? Mm -hmm. If I remember right, we did pull off this document, the yep. original document. Yep. And it, had a, it wasn't a robust uh, hours on end type of discussion, but it was... No, we had a workshop on it. Was it? It was, was, it, was it earlier on? I thought it was a workshop. It was earlier than summer. Yeah. yeah. We sat around. Because we had a retreat in November, December. Right. And so, I think May... Yeah. Yeah, we did have a check-in. And, yeah, and I recall that. I just, I, like I said, I thought we did good initially coming out of it and kind of lost a little steam towards the, towards the end of the session. Yeah, and I actually should do, uh, as we think about it next year, I, I do remember we did have that check-in. And I think we did express there were some differences of opinions yeah. on how we'd done, but we really didn't do anything with that. We didn't really, to get to your point, we kind of all maybe have had different opinions, but we didn't take that next step to say, okay, so what do we want to do? So that would be a good addition to have that check-in. But then, like we're doing tonight, come up with some action steps from that check-in to say, okay, where are we nailing it, where are we not nailing it, what do we need to do? And then, Sean, the only other question you have for this, for this list, do you intend to carry any of these things forward if we want to? Is that part of the conversation? Huh. Yeah. So, the next section is that what everybody can hand it in. <laughs> there's, quite a, there's quite a bit of uh, repetitiveness. Okay. And during, I saw uh, a little duplication from last year or something. Yeah. Because I was just going to say, for me, I it may not It may not be in the same words, but if you think about what was said there. Because I just want to, for me, what still stands out as a real opportunity is that the no surprises and improve trust. So that we all can say what's on our minds and not feel that we're being judged or whatever. So that's, that's really, really important. I think it picks up from your point, Bill. Everybody's got something valuable to contribute. We just need to let them. They may not say it the most articulately, or they might not say it in the best way. But we need to be. It's part of being a good listener. And not having, not to prejudge, you know, where it's coming from. But you know what, that, that's actually a good point because when people talk about communication, it's usually about what comes out of your mouth, um, not about what you're taking in and what you're listening and whether you're being a better listener. Because it is about improving the listening skills and sometimes not speaking. But I do think it's important too to be able to separate, um, you know, a healthy debate from a personal attack. I don't, I don't think, uh, I personally never felt like I was being, uh, you know, attacked for my beliefs, even when people didn't agree. It's, that's part of the debate process, and uh, I, that's how I see it. Uh, so I think, you know, maybe, perhaps it's, it's you know, it's always the, the you know, what you're sending isn't necessarily what's received either. Uh, you know, maybe it's you know, trying to understand each other's style and how we like to receive feedback and how we <coughs> like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, discuss things. Um, I, I guess I just feel, you know, when, when there's a, an, an issue before the council, I think we can, and I think we, we demonstrated this several times, we can disagree on points, um, but if, I think it's still, I felt that it was respectful and, and courteous and simply got agree. You know, uh, here's one point and here's another point. So I, I mean, I'm, is is the is the concern coming from a situation like that, or is there a separate, you know, uh, you know, other comments back and forth at a committee or phone calls or something like that when you're 
you're saying about the you know, no surprises in the trust kind of thing, or, or you know, feeling feeling like you're being attacked personally or something. You know what I mean? You know, I think, you know, part of it, you know, and, and I think you're right. I think everybody's got a different way of listening, a different way of receiving. Um, sometimes it's contextual, how things are said. Maybe a good part of a check-in is to say, geez, how are we feeling about some of our students? And let, let each one of us kind of somehow say, yeah, you know, it's, it's working right away. I feel like whatever it may be, they just think, you know, it's good to touch base to have those conversations. Agreed, and I think we also, part of our last year agreement, was checking in to, to pick up the phone and call, yeah. if I remember right, to say, you know, listen, so rather than have something build for a while and have this get to the summertime, and we're like, okay, here's this issue, this issue, this issue that I, I'm really concerned about, or I didn't appreciate this, you know, uh, I, I find, and Katie and I had a similar discussion this weekend, I find if we're communicating, not in text or not in written form, I, I think we can, is a, maybe a freer flow of information and a quicker understanding of where we're coming from. And we may not agree. We may still not agree, but at least we can sit there and go, okay, I, I understand where you're coming from now. I get it. You know, I, you know, I, I disagree with it, but I get where you're coming from. You know. I think that's where some of the trust comes in, though, because I think if for some people that's a lot harder to do because they right. get, they get um, nervous or apprehensive because they're not sure how it's going to be taken. And we all have things going on outside of this, and there are days where some of us are just like, you know what, I don't, I don't, wanna li I don't want to be on the receiving end of the tirade today. Right. So I think that's where the trust has to come in, where you're like, that's not going to happen, because I know we can have this discussion and then leave it on the council floor or leave it on the phone and be fine, you know? Right. So I think that's part of the trust issues that we're having. I don't want to speak. I'm not speaking for you. I'm just saying that's just how I perceived it. So I'll just make an observation because I can't speak to your internal communications last year, obviously. But what I'm what I'm hearing and trying to be a good listener is maybe there's a need for two two check-in points um, so that you split the year. So that because sometimes if you wait till midway, it's at that point you're already halfway through. You've already got. You know, all of these done, and you don't have time to kind of make corrective action if there is. So, just the thought, and that way you can make them shorter. Um, I know I do that when I'm training, hard track, but just thought. Simple thing: is it worth talking about communication preferences? You know, some people do you prefer yes. phone calls in person after five, the weekends. Uh, I know I'm more receptive if, it's, if I know when it's coming. If it happens at the wrong time, not so much. There's many a discussion point. Uh, everyone probably has a slightly different preference. And I think it depends also on the kind of the gravity of the situation too. I mean, if you know, um, I, for, for example, I, I prefer I prefer a text or a quick text or a phone call. Um, you know, and usually I'm flexible enough where I'm, my phone rings all the time anyway, so I don't. I'm, I'm not kind of in a, in a window or a box, but I know you know other people have different schedules. You're in an office, or something else is going on, and and that might not be the right way to do it. Um, and you know, we, we, I think we had a similar challenge before with the emails too, right? Because not everybody. I mean, I I can get it on my phone. Not everybody does it. Not everybody checks them. So when a communication goes out in an email, and we think, okay, it's if it's time sensitive or whatever it is, I sent the email out. The times on it when it went out, but when was it received? And did it warrant ele elevating it to that? Listen, I, I need to give you a quick phone call just to check in, or here's a quick text, call me when you get a second, or something like that. I would say if there's anything that's of great nature, which rarely happens, I mean, most of those go to the chair, or the vice chair if the chair's not available. Most critical pieces like that go to Tom, and then Sean, and then maybe sometimes. So maybe what we can do as part of the um, new task, when we get it to communications, is obviously going to be another one. We can talk about going forward and how we want. Maybe uh, maybe one of the maybe one of the job um, one of the tasks that we can send the communications committee is to come up with a protocol. You know, certain level of information will be sent only by email, um, a phone call, and you know whatever the circumstances are. That way, because that impacts how staff delivers information, Absolutely. and we want their input on you know what would be something that they would want to meet. Because I'll be honest, last year um, I'm doing way better this year. I looked at email, town email, once a week. Yeah. Yeah, I must admit that's my bias. I, you know, I, I'm reading emails almost real time and responding, yeah. you know, as quick as I can. And that's not always the case. And, and I must really admit that 
this, I'm sort of bummed sometimes. I'm the poster child on a meme when the, you know, the, the guy on the other end of the I said that five minutes ago and he hasn't responded. <laughs> I don't respond to the freaking on the email. Not on the town because I can't have that on my personal phone for work. Um, so I don't have, that's why I didn't have that before. But maybe we can talk about that part going forward. Yeah, maybe I can just collect your preferences yeah. and I can share them back up. Good. So we're just going to have that. So if I get the consensus, consensus here is that um, um, this was probably a yellow uh, rating, um, which would indi uh, it's indicative that it's um, average outcome. Um, but I think that we can also make a statement that if we emphasize the fifth bullet, um, the sixth bullet, and the seventh bullet, probably summarizes what I heard from everyone. So more robust, inclusive discussion, more respect for dif differences, um, which led to progress uh, towards reaching goals. Kind of that's a sub, so in my head, that's a summation of what I heard. That's good with you folks. All right, before we go to the next one, uh, pizza is here, as well as, and I want to thank um, Nancy for a couple of that. Um, so if you'd like to get up before it gets cold, there's also some beverages over there. Um, so track, we'll move on to goal number two. Uh, the second goal is um, improving external communications. Um, again, uh, just another slide. You can read uh, most of that um, for yourself. Um, there are some obvious, uh, some measurable goals that are kind of embedded in here. Um, that's also a little bit of a duplication with the next, but uh, just through uh, medical, uh, metrics. Excuse me. Um, so passing the budget on the first vote um, is a metric, um, and we were very positive with that. Uh, to some extent, less controversy around uh, council decisions. Um, I believe that was around the budget. Um, I think that that was a success as well. Um, we did name a town council quarterback. I believe that person was Gene Marie last year. Um, uh, we didn't do the articles, uh, but we did do a few of the surveys, the community surveys. I know that we did one for the fireworks. Um, was there another one that we did? Or was it just fireworks? Um, but at least we did one. Um, we did one on communication preferences too, about the public. So at, yes. the, at the front end, okay. Yeah, we can share those results. So, um, so there is obviously um, some measurable goals, uh, measurable metrics that we use in this area. So, uh, with that, just show it. No, no order. So don't think that the order you went last time has to be in this one. So, uh, where do you think we fell? Red, green, yellow. Why? Why not? My only negative thing to say about this is, well, I'm sure there's a couple things, but also, uh, uh, you know, pass, I'm glad we passed the budget on the first vote. Um, I know that we've also talked a little, it's not up there, but I know that, I don't know if it's, it's just not part of this or some part of something else, but we also talked about passing a lot of things on the first time because we would talk, you know, we'd get it out, we'd talk, we'd feel comfortable <coughs> passing it, but we didn't have a lot of really controversial subjects last year. So that really, to me, weighs in on a little bit of this. Um, we didn't have to do a ton of external communications because we didn't have a lot of high profile things that, like, this is January and we've already been hit with two or three relatively big things that we really need to focus on getting out into the community. So. Um, you know, that's that kind of how I feel about that. Um, you know, I think it's always great to pass the budget on the first vote. Um, I don't know if it's always going to be feasible, but um, it's always nice when it happens. It certainly feels good. Um, I still struggle with transparency a little bit. Uh, I think it's better than it was. Last year was better than it was the year before, and I'm talking about last year, um, obviously. Um, the public ownership piece of it, I still struggle with that a little bit too. Um, but I would give it a yellow. I think um, I think there's a lot of actions that didn't really happen. Other comments? No. No. <laughs> I I thought the the external communications. The e newsletter, the improved website, getting stuff up on the website so that the public knew the publication of all of the 
financial documents associated with the budget. I thought the budget committee uh, uh, you know, meeting often uh, and, and dealing with the substantive issues uh, regularly. The, the public had a tremendous opportunity to understand the budget, and I thought that uh, that was uh, the most important external communication that you can do is around the budget so that they understand. So I liked, I liked all of that. Uh, and sometimes you pass them on first vote, sometimes you don't, but we worked towards that. We had unanimity, I think, on the budget itself at the council level. And, that, and I think every single person could have said, I don't agree with this aspect or that aspect of the budget but that they, we all came together, which was an internal communications and, and cooperation aspect. But it, uh, I think it sent a very good message to the public that we were working hard to try and put something together that was collaborative and a result of compromises, since none of us got everything that we wanted in that budget. So uh, I was, those are the things that I, I was pleased with as far as external So well, I guess from my perspective, um, I recall sitting behind the table at the budget public hearing and having nobody speak. And I think everybody was kind of floored with that. Not for nor against. Um, right, so I don't, I don't, it's difficult to, to gauge what the public's, I mean, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like or, or agree with what we do. And there's always going to be somebody who agrees with what we do. I don't think we can strive for a 100% satisfaction rating as a, as a governing body. I don't think that's realistic. Um, but I think the level of, in, in my opinion, it felt last year like the level of, of discourse and, and um, uh, frustration seemed to be a lot lower. It wasn't obliterated by any stretch of the imagination, but it did seem to be uh, a little bit more subdued. And I think, um, so I think that's a good positive, a testament to, to the communication that we had, external communication we had. Um, I, I think a lot of that was how we handled deliberations and ourselves during meetings. I think there were a lot less questions, there seemed to be anyway, um, and, and a lot more clarity of what we were doing and, and why, not necessarily agreeing with it, but seeing where how our decision making process was playing out and you know why we were doing what we're doing almost almost at some points over communicating a little bit which I, I think is not an actual word I don't think you can over communicate but but really going out of our way to, to really explain you know Bill setting it up here's what this is ordinance is about here's what we're acting on this is what the impact is going to be and then having counselor discussions about what about this how about that you know interactions with staff. I think that was helpful. So um, I don't know what it's been like in past years in terms of the number of emails and, and phone calls and stuff. I, I really didn't receive a whole lot in terms of negative feedback. Uh, it, it wasn't zero, obviously. We all got a couple of, uh, um, but usually it was a bulk email kind of thing of, to all the counselors if I'm, I'm disappointed or upset with this one aspect of it. Uh, and it, I think is somebody typically from the group would respond, um, and and you know wouldn't necessarily go away. But I think once we've done that, that's part of the communication process. Is I think explaining where we're coming from and what we're doing and why, and not necessarily I don't think having to convince everybody to agree with us. I, I don't know if that's possible. You know, I mean, we do have to make decisions, and we have to make the decisions based on the information that we have. So. Um, People don't like to hear that when they don't agree with you. <laughs> but but I think that we do have to, I think we've done a good job of communicating that and expressing that in terms of, hey, you know, we're we're listening, we're taking in all kinds of different stuff. So I, I'd give us probably on external, I'd say, I'd give us a green on that one. Um, doesn't mean that I think we're over and done and can move on. I think hopefully we've built on what we've, what we've started last year. Um, there's a lot more trust, I think, that we can still build. Um, and that comes, I think, with communication. That's what, we, that's what our goal was, to bring it up in the first place. Cool. And we communicated uh, that on the issue that's probably uh, number one 
through 10 is the most important issue for town is responsible treatment of budgets. We came out of the gate saying we're going to have consistent predictable budgets for the third year. We delivered a budget below 3%. Yeah. And the years prior to that, it was erratic. And so from a communications point of view, while that reference to 3% or less shows up in the next goal, it was a communication to the public that they had an expectation that we were going to live up to that. And we did. And we weren't, and, and how high water, I think that's something we have to do year in and year out, have manageable, predictable budgets. So I think I put that in the external communication <coughs> fold. <coughs> And, and, sorry, and I, I kind of very similar to the first one. I think if I compare the first year on the council, it depends how you measure it. Glass half full, glass half empty. From the first year to the second year, huge change. We, we made huge strides forward. However, I would say, and I really believe it's sort of the continuous improvement process that we should really look at what we nailed, but really be open about what there's still opportunity. And I, I guess I put ourselves kind of in the yellow again, I think, and especially. If you look down at the outcomes that we set, things like understated community needs, services and values, community goals for the council based on their input, more transparency, I think those are still things, at least they're still, I think, in some courts a real perception issue. Yeah. I mean, certainly, we have had negative comments. I think, Kate, your point's very spot on. The budget, I think, and again, personally, I think it kind of follows what we started out of the gate really strong. I think we really did a much different job on the budget. I think that's where we all focused. I think we saw the dividends for that. Then I think after that, you know, we may have kind of lost the mojo a little bit. So I just think I'd like us to take, as we think about goals going forward, we pick off this list the things that we can still make progress on. So those are, those are the things that I just want to do. So I think, I think we're in the yellow. I think we made a lot of progress, but I think there's still some, some heavy lifting to do. Um, I think this is, uh, I think we hit a home run, um, and I'm definitely in the green, um, primarily because, and this ties back to the comment, or one of the outcomes from the previous slide on internal goals, and that is about trust. And I believe, if you think about every instance that we actually, uh, on every issue that we dealt with, even though it was a somewhat of a slow year on controversial issues, um, we were engaging. We provide, every time we were posed with questions, we provided the answers. Um, we provided information, we improved the channels in which we then distributed that by creating more concise and succinct uh, location within the website. Um, there were different pieces to that. Um, we did guarantee we didn't do it for every issue, but we did at least you know, start with uh, doing the community survey that we did on the fireworks. Um, so I think that we um, did very well on this. The other piece is that when we talk about the trust, um, I'm a firm believer is that we need to trust the citizens that elected us. They elected us to make a decision for them. And every election cycle is when they get to evaluate you and determine whether or not you did that job correctly. So I think, personally, when there isn't comment at a budget, I think it's because we're doing our job and doing it right. Uh, I'm not saying that every citizen believes that we're hitting a home run. Um, just like we have doubts about the, pro uh, the, the, the pieces to a budget, we didn't get everything that we wanted. Um, but, generally speaking, I do believe that the citizens actually support us and our work. There's always going to be a contingency. That, you know, what's that rule? Like one third that um, will always agree with you, one third will always disagree with you. It's about the half that's in the middle because you have that vex that goes over and switches back and forth. Um, and I think that we are um, hitting a home run in this area. Can we still do more things better? Of course. I mean, maybe one time when you didn't get a performance review at work and which that your boss and you could do better, even when you hit a home run. Of course you can. So I think that, yes, we can do more. Um, you know, some of it is about repetitiveness, you know, things that we do. So the budget forum um, is becoming a staple that is a great way in which we communicate. Um, and even there, you know, we went from, what, 120 people at the first one to less than 20 um, last year. So, uh, and then we pass it on the first budget. And by the way, I'm, I'm not a firm believer that it has to pass on the first budget. Um, the year before, even though it took us three shots, we have to think internally about the breakdown of communications that led to that. It wasn't about the budget. It was about the communications. We did not communicate well with the school board and our peers um, around that issue. We did not communicate well with the public. 
so you know you have to look at the individual instances that lead up to some of the conflict that's created, and we create that conflict ourselves. And that, for, by the way, we created that conflict ourselves when we came to that first budget two years ago. So I think we had a home run. I just can I say something? Real quick? Of course. Um, well, did you want to go first? Because you haven't had a chance to speak. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, I'll talk to the <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to. Um, uh, one of the goals of, and we haven't had a chance to meet with Tom yet, but one of the goals of the communications group is going to be that in an ideal world for me, no one is ever going to be able to say in this town that they didn't have access to information because we're going to nail it in every single facet that we can. So whether that's Facebook or the newsletter or emails or counselors having meetings or town hall style meetings, whatever it takes for us to reach that is our goal for this year. We're going, and I'm going to tell you that we're going to hit that goal. Um, now, whether everyone's going to say, you know, we're still going to have like, like Sean said, we're never always going to have 100 percent. People are never going to 100 percent say you, you know, you're, 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 you're on it. But I do firmly believe that we can get to a point where there's going to be absolutely no reason, I think we're actually almost there, no reason for anybody to not be able to access information that's coming out of this council. I just, I really do. There are so many ways to access information nowadays that there, are no, there is no reason for anyone in this town to not be able to access information. So it's my goal and my, my personal goal and I hope that it will be taken up on my committee and then I hope the council will help us with that um, is to make it is to tweak a couple of things in a couple of areas and to bring in a couple of new ideas and make it so that we are hitting everybody and that means from the nursing homes to the schools all the way down because I think there's a misconception in this town that even though we talk about the schools a lot and they are obviously extremely important, we have a very large elderly population in this town. Um, and we're missing the boat with some of them. And some of the reasons why they vote no on the budget is because they don't understand it. And so for me, that's a personal goal that I want to make sure that that never happens. I don't want to ever have somebody vote no on our school budget because they just don't understand it. Um, so, that would... sorry. Well, but you know what, I think that, that brings up a great point. Uh, and that part of that is the communication that we're doing now from joint finance. Um, I do know in the past, and I don't know what Julie's methodology is going to be, but I do know in the past, they've taken that budget show on the road and brought it down to Piper Shore and brought it to a couple of other different senior homes and you know, said, yeah, ask questions, we're here to communicate. Um, I don't know if Julie's going to follow with that protocol or not. I, I would encourage her to do that. Um, I would hope that that's the case, that, that we're included in that. And that's my point, is yeah. that would be where the communication resource exactly. says, listen, we know you're going to Piper Shores, why don't you bring we'll them, why don't you. you go with them and yeah. say, you know, I'm, you know, they're, they're giving the, the, the yeah. school side of it, and, you know, or Peter for finance goes in and says, okay, yeah, that's a big part of it, but here's what we're doing on the, on the municipal side, too. I mean, my goal is to hit the nursing homes and the schools and um, and everywhere in between because I think we're, we're, there's, a, there's that miss there. And I strongly, strongly believe that there are some people that vote no because they don't understand it. And I want to make sure they understand it, whether that's a yes vote because they understand it or a no vote because they understand it. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. I just want to make sure they understand it. And not everybody learns or absorbs information the same way. And so while I'm not saying that it's a hand-holding thing and that we need to go out and hand-hold everybody's hand because we can't do that as a town, I just think that there are ways for us to be able to hit that mark just a little bit better. And I think in the end, when we do that, it's going to make us stronger. And it's going to improve our relations with the town, which is something that we're lacking in right now. Sorry, Will. Sorry. Um, so I think um, I agree with, uh, really agree with Peter's assessment that we did a really nice job communicating about the budget, uh, but I think that there were other aspects where we didn't do quite as good a job, so we're kind of just inconsistent. And so that's why I put it more in the yellow, and when I look at some of the bullet points that are on here, I think that we <coughs> did some of them really well, uh, and some of them we didn't, we didn't address at all. Um, and that's... 
and then at other times some of them are more convoluted or convoluted work. I think that, yeah, we, we have room for improvement. One thing that I thought helped us with external communications was uh, workshops. Mm -hmm. That if it was something important, uh, we just took the extra hour, mm -hmm. showed up early. And the other thing was, and I kind of picked up this as the year began and got going, don't ever let a matter come before the council without a good clarification up front as to what it is, so that more and more I would ask Tom or Dan to be able to lead before any motion or anything or public comment so that everybody in the room had a good sense because there's people at home television they haven't looked at the online materials or anything they're just sitting there mm -hmm. taking it in yep. and and I've watched town council meetings and I go I don't know what well, back in 2011 12 before I was involved I have no clue what they're talking about but uh, because there was no sort of introduction and I think that's a very important make the public who's watching, whether in person or on TV, I so make sorry. them understand what it is we're doing. And I will say that the people that I've spoken to in talking with, about communications okay. and ask, kind of asking them, doing my own informal survey, um, and one woman in particular, everything she had to say was negative, 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 except for the workshops. Oh, she loved the workshops. She was like, that's where I get the bulk of my information and that's where I understand it. Because when I, same thing you said, when I sit and watch a council meeting, I don't understand what's going on. Right. But when you do a workshop, I get it. So everything she, yep. I just wanted to throw that at you yeah. because I felt so strongly about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, catch. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew that, that everything she had to say was negative, but it was, uh, she was trying to be, give me some critique. Yeah. But she did say, I love the workshops. Yeah. We, I think we learned some things about what is an effective means yes. of external communication. I agree. So this is the one area where I feel like I could offer some yeah. observations from the outside in. And um, the two things I've had in terms of Greenway all the way that you nailed were the workshops. Um, definitely increased in frequency. Um, and, and I think that's super helpful and people appreciate that. Um, the other thing was it seemed to me anyway that there's been a stronger concerted effort to be really mindful of the first reading, public hearing, second reading process so that there's a longer length of time before <laughs> something comes to the council and then that ultimately either gets approved or denied. And I think that's really helpful regardless of where somebody stands on any issue. And I think it was probably why I was confused last at our last meeting. Um, but that's a whole other piece. Um, questions that I would still have around external communications, um, and this came from well, just my limited time so far um, is so things like uh, committee um, minutes. So after you know how how who's responsible for posting those and how they get posted. So if someone wants to go look back at you know what rules and policies, for example, then I'll just pick on that. Not just because it's my committee now, and I'm trying to do, to do some back history for myself. Like none of those are on the website. So yes, I can probably dig into SharePoint and find them somewhere, but they should be available. So that would be an area where I think you can improve. Just so you know, they are all now. Just so you know, Maybe just in case today. anyone, when they post this the video online, I just want people to know that they are all there. Now. Yeah, and I knew they were, and Tony was going to be working towards that goal. Um, but I'm just saying, if you're looking for an area mm -hmm. where someone might poke a hole at you and say, do this better, because they want to be able to catch up, um, that would be an area. And also, so a couple of folks have said that they sent emails and they didn't get any response at all. It would be my hope and belief that, and maybe that's what, I don't know what you guys meant by the quarterback, but that every citizen who writes, even if it's just a quick thanks for your inquiry or thanks for whatever, gets some kind of a response. And I don't, what's hard about that, I think, is particularly in that group email format is, you know, we don't want to all respond because that's kind of uh, redundant as well. Um, and maybe that's what, what how you guys use Team Marie in that role. But um, I think it's important because I, I do think it's not good if 
somebody doesn't feel heard. You know? I can, um, <clears throat> at least I believe, um, I would call the chair of the communications committee, now our quarterback, because that's really, it was her, it was a, it was a one-person show in making sure the things got done that got done. You know, whether it's the e-newsletter or, um, you know, other pieces that kind of went around that. So that has been more formalized. One of the things that I wanted to uh, suggest, um, although I just uh, lost a train of thought. Um, hold on a second. What were we talking about? Oh, um, so some of these items <clears throat> that we've talked about as metrics, if you think about them, they're really not metrics for, um, I think, for goal setting. They might be better metrics in assessing the value of um, and the responsibilities of the chair. Yeah. And the reason is because if you like what you have been doing, then I hope that um, every chairperson or every person that wants to be chair will take that into consideration when they put their name forward or are being asked to um, do that because the workshops should automatically be a responsibility regardless of your own style because everyone else is asking for that to be done. And even though we do have changeover on the council, it's usually not dramatic. Um, this, what, every three years is only one cycle in which you could lose three. So, um, so it really shouldn't have to change. And I'm also a believer that when you are um, first elected, um, you really need to kind of come in and um, feel your way in the sense of um, while you are here to make change, um, I, you know, it generally won't happen within the first year. And so that, that's where, while, so if you come in and you don't like the workshops, it might not be the best approach to demand that that change immediately when everyone else in the group has uh, come to that norm. But maybe the following year is when you have an open discussion. And not that that's happened, I'm just saying that because of the cycle. Um, so I hope, you know, uh, the workshops, the one-on-ones that I'm doing, um, you know, I, I'm also instituting the, I call every counselor um, before the meeting to make sure there's no questions um, regarding what's on the agenda. Um, offered advice on some things procedurally um, in advance to kind of make sure that they go smoothly at the meeting, whether it's Robert's rules or process or whatever. So I hope that whoever is next does the same thing that Bill started for us. And it should become automatically within that position and not, you don't have to have this every year because it's already been created. So, um, so if I heard everyone, um, and I think everyone's spoken, right? On this, anybody? Um, I would say that um, it's, in, again, another one that's in between a yellow and a green. Um, probably on the higher end of a yellow um, than it is on the lower end of the green. Um, and if I was to summarize a statement in this particular area, I probably would focus on um, bullet number two in the outcomes, which is understand community needs, services, and values. Um, Maybe bullet number four, uh, community goals for council based on uh, getting input. Um, so this can go around kind of a survey kind of approach. And then looking at under actions, I would include probably, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged right, one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh bullet, seventh and part of the eighth bullet, increase our opportunities for dialogue with the community and increasing interaction. Um, I wouldn't probably include the other pieces because that's individual, but would, would that be a fair kind of statement to summarize everyone's comments? I, I do think, to Katie's point, um, and I think I was the one who put that out there last year, determine the response protocol for a group email. Mm -hmm. We've got a one button click now where they can literally email all of us at once. I think we do need to come up with, and probably I would guess that would be communication, so yeah. come up with a good protocol of at least somebody responds that even if it's not an answer, it's a thank you, we received your email, we're taking it under advisement or we'll look into it or whatever, something. And if I do respond um, back with like, a, if it's like a generalized question or a question that is easily answered, I do try to send then a blast back to all of you saying, this is how I answered, just so that you're aware of it. Um, the only time I don't do that stuff is if it's um, uh, someone who's asking for an opinion um, mm -hmm. or if they're asking, um, you know, certain specific things. Well, I, but I think one-on-one -on -one communications is different yeah. than, than a group email that we receive yeah. of, 
hey, counselors, I'm upset by this. Right. And if they don't get a response, I think to Katie's point, of yeah. course, you know, I would get upset too. I'm like, you guys don't yeah. even care. You know? But that's definitely something that we can include in our communications. Yeah. And because yes. Sean actually created a committee, there's three of us. Yeah. So um, we can, we'll mash that out and then get a response. We'll get a response yeah. back. So I just want to add that to the other action. That's one of the critical. Um, yep, so when we talk about, so we'll, we'll talk about under the future, if you don't mind. Um, so one of the things that I, uh, so a couple of you have actually brought this up recently about the response issue, um, and so I'm going to get better at at least sending a thank you, because I, um, I don't engage in opinion-based email conversations that are in a group talk. Um, I will respond when it deals with facts, or they want information that I can verify and um, direct them in a particular area. Um, <laughs> If it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that's good for me. So um, as chair, I will at least until the protocols or something comes out that I'd be happy to at least acknowledge. Um, as long as you understand, unless there has been a decision by the council, I will not share a personal opinion. At least I try not to. <laughs> Well, we're I usually delete it before I send it. <laughs> I put it in my in my draft file. I know. File. <laughs> I know. I, it, it saves you. Is that group email uh, handy? I think my sense is the public likes. The public it's loves it. They like it because yeah, it's money. Money's it's money's 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 the public loves it. It's they are also to able to see everything at the same time. Yeah. Like, and if you didn't reply at all, yeah. uh, everyone can see the response yeah. as well. Uh, could I just offer a couple of yeah. uh, comments? From the staff's point of view, the workshops work wonderfully well. It's an opportunity for us to dig a lot deeper than we can in formal meeting format. So uh, I'll be looking to work with the, with the chair as I did last year. Uh, we'd like to schedule this out over the next couple of months and have a couple of things in queue. We should be able to program that, that out far enough in advance. Um, so I, I think we should be doing as many of those as, as you can possibly fit your schedule, frankly. And there's no end, literally, uh, to, to the topics that we cover. Um, one other uh, kind of just strategy, and I, this is something the Joint Finance Committee has adopted, so some of you uh, know this. They have a little check-in at the end of the meetings to say kind of what we learned, kind of yeah. takeaways. And I bring that up because we are now dabbling into social media. It's a brave new world for us, and I must admit, it's not intuitive to me. So if there is something that you want either highlighted on our website or uh, brought up you know, uh, through social media, um, mention it. Uh, you know, whether it's from your council comments or taking a side of the other meeting. Um, let's not assume anything. That and done. an email. Like, I, yeah. sent him, I sent Tom a couple of things saying, can you, can you please post this? Yeah, Peter does the same. So this is a great little shot for social media. And, is there um, one person who's kind of the chief of that? Or Yes. And that there is, is, but Melissa is okay. heading that up, but we have decentralized it. I mean, the thing about social media is that if you centralize it and have to approve all the posts, you, it comes to the writing hall. I mean, it was its effectiveness. So, um, yeah, we're, we're and that was a trying to meet with Kate. We have, uh, we'd love to share all the things we have in place currently, because there's no sense in you duplicating there. Yeah, and that, and so you but that, was a, that was a process to get the Facebook stuff going only because you have to be very careful with um, because we are a town and who has access to it and what we're going to post and what we can post and so it, it's kind of, it was kind of a process to even get it started so the staff actually worked really hard on that and major props to IT and stuff for, for getting that going. Is it still Tom on only a one-way portal? It is for yeah. everyone but the police. Okay. Police two-way communication is really important. Yep. To solve okay. crimes yep. 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 with that. Okay. The, the final piece is, and I think Bill used it to some extent, um, oftentimes residents take their time to come to your council meeting, offer public comment, and ask a question as part of that public comment. Yep. And they, they often leave feeling dissatisfied because they didn't give their answer. Some things can't or shouldn't be answered in that form, but many times I or my staff have that. So. I don't want to get into tit for tat with someone at the podium, but through the chair, if that could be an effective way to make sure people have their questions answered. And Bill really started that, and we're, we've done that this year as well. So, so. after that, don't hesitate to, to do that. Uh, it's something yeah. I know that's readily available, it's something we can kind of move that's on right. from immediately. Let's do it. And the, and, the, and the reason I think people have shied away from the past is because you can get into a debate with the person yes. standing at the podium. So what I always tried to do was let the person finish, sit, and then 
point to a person, whether it was Dan or Tom or whoever, and say, can you respond to that? Because that way, at least, and, and it, it brings it to a conclusion rather rapidly, which is, I think, what we're intending to do. Yes. Give an answer, but, but don't get into a big dialogue yeah. debate. A tit for tat can end you up in Superior Court, so let's just all be mindful of that. <laughs> Some of us uh, so, uh, are a little sensitive to that yeah, subject. Yeah. So we are now um, an hour in. Um, so uh, we did start a little bit late, so keep that in mind. So I hope, if anything, um, this third goal, which was to further enhance financial management, um, I hope that we are all in agreement um, to some extent that this is pretty solidly green for the past year. Um, personally, I, I just... Um, I think we did a very, I think we did a very good job, uh, both in the deliberation process, the thoughtfulness that went behind the conversation on why the budget needed its support and the amount of money being spent. It was the third year in which we had a sustainable uh, tax increase that was responsible and realistic. Um, is everyone happy? No. And this goes back to that whole, uh, that whole thinking, you know. Um, the only thing that we didn't really accomplish from a task, but we've at least started it um, already for this year, is, the, is focusing on the trends and metrics and how do we then compare ourselves to our neighboring communities or the peer group. Um, so while that might not have been necessarily fully accomplished last year, um, the Finance Committee had been very diligent in making sure that we started this year off um, very quickly with that. So personally, I think this one, if it had a, a blue or something even better than green, I would say that we did a great job on this one. I see most heads shaking. Uh, I'd say the proof is in the fact that the budget passed the first round. That's the ultimate test. Um, I mean, I think, again, and I think it's it, part of the external communication. We, we communicated very clearly that it wasn't idyllic for everybody, um, but it was. we did it jointly with the schools. We did it uh, unanimously amongst the council. And I think that carries weight in the community. I do. I think if they see divisiveness, or, or um, I guess divisiveness isn't a good word, but if they see that we are kind of at odds, trying to wrestle with what we what we think yeah. is right, it, it allows them to go well. If they don't uh, agree, you know, how how do we know really what's going on? But I think when we get that full support, I'm not saying we're going to get it at the end of this year. Obviously, every year is different. But I think having that kind of joint um, school town collaboration thing, I think it helped a lot. And and I think it's because we hit all those metrics on the financial management side that allowed us to do that, except for the bottom. Hmm. Which I agree with you, but that's right. We should, we should total up the meetings. It struck me, you know, the, the, around the budget, you, you, you met early, you met often, you met open. And, you know, at the end of the process, I have to believe that a lot of the voters were comfortable that it was a, big, a, a good, thorough, open process. It, it may not have been agreed with the final outcome, but at least it wasn't done behind closed doors. Uh, it wasn't done in short service. It was done thoroughly. I think a little, uh, a little noticed aspect of this was these budgets are. It's not easy to achieve uh, a, uh, a controlled budget, and uh, especially. It's uh, of the of it is the school side, but it means a lot of it's sort of shared control. But actually, we have what I would think is a little less than equally shared control over that because the school goes through the whole process of developing the budget, and they have 24 month plans, and they work their tail off to get to where they are, and and so. We're sort of the ultimate decider of what goes to the referendum, but that's that's tough. And so, what it requires is that it's easier if we have a really good relationship with the school board. And I think that the budget committee did a terrific job of enhancing that. And I think we all need to recognize that the better our personal relationships are with the school board members, uh, the more they'll have confidence in us because that's they, they're they kind of apprehensive about what are we going to do. And so I, I think that's a very important aspect of being able to be successful 
to actually enhance our financial management is to have a very good relationship with school board members so that there's a dialogue, so that well, if we have tough news to deliver about there's limitations because that's really what we do. I knew George certainly, he had some pretty ambitious budgets. <laughs> uh, uh, and so we need to be able to uh, arrive at something at the, especially at the starting gate. How many times did we hear that at the starting gate of budgets? It seemed like it was setting the wrong tone to begin with. And so, but we can't do their job for them. That's their, their job to do the budget. And then we sort of get it. And so, but I think to your point though, it's, it's not just trust with the community, it's trust between the, the, the two groups. I think you know, and true. I think one of our goals in finance is to not be having discussions every year about the annual budget because it's already been vetted out. We should be arguing and discussing what our three year or our five year investment is. You know, why, you know, that's where the real debate should be and hopefully the budget is stable and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, strong enough that, you know, it really becomes a, you know, kind of a, you know, chugging along and, and no surprises and, and sustainable and, and predictable. Like that's what, the, I think those two, two words were key for us. Yeah. Um, so, I, but, so but I, I do, I'm sorry, I do, I do think there, you know, we have to, we have to do a, 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 a job, and I think we're doing it on the finance level, of developing that trust and rapport with, with the school board as well. And, but I, and I think it comes back, though, to the, to the overall support for the budget, of trusting that they've done the, the groundwork and that they've done the heavy lifting. And what they've said is, we've identified these are our issues. And we go, okay, we trust that those are your issues. You know? um, and okay, so then how do we support that? You know? Or how do, or, or we, we know enough to say, agreed, those are issues. Can we do one this year and one next year? Because we've got this other problem on the municipal side, or this other issue on the municipal side we've got to address, and we've got to maintain that limit on where our, where that 3% limit, at or below. I think that's a big problem, though, is that I don't feel comfortable that we've been able to do that, because I feel like any time we've ever, or personally, and I'm speaking for me, any time I've ever pushed back, even on a, on a very small scale, um, it's met with, complete resistance and total shutdown and it's frustrating because it's not that's not how I operate so like then I get like nervous and anxious and then the communication is completely shut down so I actually agree with all of your points but I also want to add that it's got to come from both sides you know and they have to be willing to also come to the table and we don't we, we don't get what we want I mean we have been sitting in the same chairs for 14 years. And I know that sounds like a really dumb example, but it's the first thing that popped to my head. And quite frankly, when it comes down to it, would I rather spend the money on our children or our seniors instead of getting us new chairs? Absolutely. But it was just the first thing that I could think of. But it just seems like sometimes there's no bend there. Like, it's this way, and if it's not this way, then it's like, boom. It's like stone cold. And that's just how I feel. And I hope that we're making, I felt last year that that wasn't, I didn't feel as anxious around that time. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that maybe we're, we are making progress because I really want to see that because I think that if we can get over that hump, we're, we could be on un un two committees that are just unstoppable and could come up with really sound, good budgets for this town. And we have to stop this um, this rhetoric of if you don't vote for the budget or if you say, can you cut the budget by this, you don't like it. Like that's, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. I've been, I mean, I've been, I was like terrorized through email over one, over one vote. You know what I mean? And that's not saying that came from the board, but it's just frustrating. You know, because in reality, of course, we wouldn't be doing this job if we didn't, want good schools or we didn't want a good library or we didn't want a good police station we wouldn't be here so I'm willing to come to the table and I just hope that everybody else is too and I hope that this year goes even better than last year because last year was the first year I walked away from that 
budget with the school board and actually felt good. First year. In six. And I think that's no small part to the joint meetings we've been having on finance. Because, I agree. Because we have similar discussions, but that's how we develop the trust and rapport. Yeah. I mean, I... Uh, but I, you guys are having those. We're, we're, if we're not on that, we're not. Well, and so maybe we've got to communicate that out better. Right? We either need to communicate that out better, or we need to find a better way to get everybody engaged. To I'd, get be, and I'd be curious after for to get your thoughts on, like, how do we make that relationship better because I want to be open. I want them to feel comfortable to send me an email and say, hey, what is this or that? Or can you help me with this? Or, you know, there was just an incident that just happened, you know, and I felt like completely out in the, out in the cold. And I don't know why that is. And so I hope that we can get to a point where that doesn't happen. Comments? So just briefly, I think that uh that I would, I would put this in the green. I think we need to keep doing what we're doing. And it's been working really well. And it's solid. Katie? Okay. <clears throat> oh, I think you guys can, I wasn't there. But I mean, I'm not looking at the budget I supported. I, I, for the first time, I felt like I was actually also in the citizen able to express some concerns without, uh, without feeling like I was going to be uh, judged or reprimanded. And I think, for me, that's a super important goal. Um, there are people in our community who are hurting, and even a 3% increase is too much for them. And if you can't hear that, then you're kind of leaving some people out. Um, I'm not saying that you can't help that, you know, right. but, but they're not saying this hurts me because they don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's, there are some people who are that strapped. $50 more a year hurts them, yeah. and that's just the truth. So I think you just got to always be mindful. Um, and give them the benefit of the doubt, too. And in the school board's defense, their job is to take care of the schools and the kids. But I think people in the town also have to remember, our job is to take care of everybody, including the schools and the kids and everybody else. And I think sometimes people forget that. So um, a couple, uh, just an observation, and then uh, kind of the overall assessment. One is um, uh, to, to kind of, uh, to Katie and Kate's point, on both ends of the spectrum, um, no matter what, when the conversation ends and it can no longer be debated, you're going to have people who will sit there and say, you hate kids because you want to cut the budget. Um, and you're going to have people who will sit there and say, you don't appreciate or you hate um, the elderly, those who are less fortunate or unable to pay because you want to increase taxes. Because that's the automatic defense that they go to. Um, and, you know, not to discard it, but... Um, there's a point where, you know, I think that the constituents elect you because of how strong you are, that you can actually make um, a decision that is truly balanced for the entire community. Because I have not seen, in this, I'm going in my third year, this particular cycle, this has been a very progressive, very balanced town council when it comes to conversations around the budget. Because um, I wasn't here when they had those big fluctuations two years ago, or three, four years ago. So I didn't live through that. Um, although it is very different today than it was for those who knew I, when I was here 15 years ago. Um, very, very different. So, um, and I think the reason why it's getting better and needs to continue is because we're also understanding each other's roles and responsibilities better and respecting it. And when I say we, it's the town council and the school board. The town council understands and appreciates the role that the school board has and that it is completely autonomous from the town council um, and different. And I do think that the school board is becoming more understanding of the difficulties that we have in making the overall budget and that there's been a better balance at least this past year it was a huge huge difference than the first year um so if i was to um, i'm definitely agreeing from what everybody says and if i was to summarize it i picked um, um under outcomes bullet number two three and four and then uh, to some extent under actions bullet number five so incremental improvement in services delivery responsible realistic budget sustainable tax increases and really, the, uh, on the community budget forum piece, it's really more about feedback, input, and um, engagement around the budget and financial management. So there's a statement kind of flowing in there that um, uh, we'll try to put together. So um, that gives us um, exactly a half hour. Um, I'm going to skip this overall um, because if I was to quantify um, um, the prior conversations, I would suggest that an overall uh, um, assessment for the year is that we're probably in the high uh, yellow, low green kind of combination because 
we did not put any weights to the individual goals, so one did not necessarily uh, have more weight than the other. So I'm looking at it from a quantified, you know, 33% across the board. So based on what I heard, are you guys all comfortable that that's probably where that is? Okay. So um, for the next part, um, you know, just the process for this year. Um, and, and by the way, thank you for uh, going over that. I think it's really important that you have that, that rear view mirror look into what you've done and accomplished and, and have input from everybody. So again, this year, uh, we followed somewhat similar process. I simply got input from everybody, asked for five or six different uh, goals that you wanted for the year um, and how we can put that together. Um, I am not going to go through the next four slides individually. Um, this presentation is available and will be available online and you have, have it. Um, in your email zone as well. Um, what I've done here is I've listed everyone's task or everyone's goal that they sent me. Um, the first two initials, this is all in alphabetical order uh, based upon the submitter. Um, and they should all be there. And then what I did is I went through each and I said, okay, what is the uh, key word? What is the, uh, um, the uh, motivator or signifier, what I call a signifier within the statement that can kind of tell me what group it really should be kind of in? So, um, and so this is purely subjective and it has no input from you, so I apologize. But the goal is to um, have you kind of take a look at how they all fall into the groupings. And you can either agree, disagree, and we can move around. Again, this is really going to be just a baseline. Um, you get to determine. So um, you can see there's some very long statements, some shorter ones. Um, and I went through all of them and, and uh, then broke it down. So what I found was, to back up, I found um, a consistency um, in the, um, primarily, I believe it's in three categories. The first was um, communications and relationships. The next was budget and uh, fiscal financial issues. And the third was governance, policy, and programs. Um, governance is uh, really capturing um, things that we do, the procedures that we take, the um, interactions, how we follow rules and, um, you know, conduct meetings and pieces like that. Policies are, you know, our own rules and policies. Uh, they could be also municipal policies like HR policies. Programs are specific to the program. So as an example, in one of mine, I talk about um, community television. So that's grouped under that category because it's a program specific. Um, went through all of that. Um, and there were two comments that I wanted to mention um, that I will need to get some clarification on that I didn't know where to place. So if you wish to have them, um, I'd like to, based on the conversation, have the writer, um, which is Katie and Will, to kind of maybe get, guide me on where to place them because I just could not figure out what group to put them in. Um, and I wanted to make sure they all got in there um, and then we all then decide to take out whatever is necessary. Um, so you can go through that. And then what I did is I, this is the kind of uh, um, the task outline. I am um, in the grouping. Um, you have an outcome and action, which is those that you gave me. And then um, for a measure or metrics is, um, and I did not presume what you would want. Some of them may already somewhat suggest what that metric should be. And the, and the purpose of this exercise is one, do we want every one of the tasks that were included? Are there any duplications? And then two, what is the um, um, quantifiable metrics that you want to use so that at the half year and the full year end, we can look back and say this was achieved or not achieved. So the question I have, um, so um, just to show you the other two, and this is the difficult part because um, I had computer problems this weekend with, um, for some reason I could not get the email to go out of my house on my iPad to get you this earlier. So. We may need to take this offline uh, or at least take it out of here to have you give you time to think about it as well as to think about the metrics and then what I can do is receive that feedback from you, put it into the kind of the same format and then come back together with that um, at a workshop before a council meeting um, and kind of share where they all fall out. Um, so um, you'll see on the other pages that actually there's only one because it, the, fun, the good part was budgets, um, it was pretty clear. <laughs> Um, other than some specific programs, um, most of those outcomes and actions are also, um, well, quite a few of them are specific and really could be the metrics itself. So that was actually the easiest one that every, it, it was pretty consistent across the board. 
um, particularly focusing on the tax rate increase that being remaining within our goals uh, for the year. Um, then there's some specific ones. Um, the others are a little bit uh, governance and policy. You'll see those there. So then the goal is um, for each one of these uh, core concepts or groups and, and looking at them, what type of um, actual goal statement do you want um, to reflect all of those, um, all of those uh, outcomes and actions? So if I go back to, so as an example, we have a, an abbreviated statement for uh, financial goals for last year. The question I have is, um, in my personal and somewhat in a professional recommendation, it seems to me that all three goals last year, um, except for um, communications, well, commu communications is still a goal. It's just that there's other, um, there's that governance piece that's by itself that wasn't there last year. So maybe our goals for this year around communication could stay the same. Our goal around financial uh, management could technically stay the same because it's a very broad statement and that's what you want for the goal because you really should be able to carry those over a longer period of time and then have metrics that simply change because you're trying to drive the goal in a different direction um, after a couple successful years of completing the task. So um, the, only, the only one that is separated that's different was again um, it's about governance, policies, and programs. Um, you know, I think that within some of the outcomes there might be a um, goal statement. So as an example, uh, you know, there's a couple of references to uh, strategic planning. Um, there's some specific uh, actions such as completing the comprehensive plan update um, and some other pieces. So the question I have for you, because we only have 25 minutes, is does it seem reasonable that we take this as a takeaway um, and that we work on that individually and then have you forward them to me and then I can kind of bring this information together like I did here at a workshop um, in which we then can set up metrics. Does that sound okay? It's the only way I think you're going to get real yeah. good feedback if I can't just quickly kind of absorb all of that. Yeah, I just, we need more time yeah. to yeah. go through it. I started going through it, I was telling Tom earlier. My eyes started crossing. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, you know, because these were not just the, my thoughts, they were seven people's right. thoughts. And so I had to sort of decipher, what do they mean by that? Yeah, I agree. And you actually showed a little process, I think. Reflecting back on last year, yeah. how we did it, once, once we got to this point where you, you've organized them around governance policy, then I think we had some type of process where instead of having all ten items or however many items there are, each one of us vote for what would be yes. the top two or three, two or three. Or three. <clears throat> so I don't know if that would be a worthwhile exercise to try to boil this down. Then once you get the top two or three, then, then it's easier to write sort of a, a goal statement sure. or something. So I don't know. So what I can do, um, and actually you can do this on your own. I don't need to resend this out because uh, you should already have it in your email, by the way. Um, when you go through, if you identify um, and only offer a metrics, um, that is to one of the top three items that you want in each one of those. So I'll not just flat the top three items. Yep. So only answer um, the question about a successful measure or metrics on the top three items that you wish us to include. Yeah. Okay. I'll look for the commonalities, um, and if there's multiple definitions or metrics, then I'll at least in the, in the graph I'll bring them both so that you can then see because they you might get might be getting to the same point. It's just a different um, methodology. So walk me through exactly what you're looking for then. So let's say I pick uh, for top one, I pick prioritize needs. What am I writing in the success measure metrics? I would say prioritize needs means I want a top three list at the end of every meeting. Yes. That, that's what it means. Yes. That's what you're asking for. Yes. Okay. And because you answer that, that means it's one of your priorities. Gotcha. If you, um, so I'm asking for each one, maybe three of your top um, outcomes in each of the core in areas. In each of the core areas. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you don't need to rank one of them because we can talk about that at the session. But, you know, so as an example, so total increase of tax, zero to 3%. Right. So that needs to be uh, somewhat specific. Uh, we've always used it, you know, um, one, because it's a, a, there is a significant difference between a zero tax increase and a 3% tax increase. And that is, um, needs to be defined more uh, definitively because of 
the finance committee's work in order to be able to then direct the manager to be able to put a budget together. You see what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't say, well, anything, uh, it's like, I want a reasonable budget. How on earth do you measure, how do you, mm -hmm. how do you measure that? Right. So it's some of the, yes, yeah, relative. So you need to be specific in some of these, and it needs to be something that we can measure, and then we can either collect data um, or provide some type of output. But it strikes me total tax increase of less than or equal to three percent. Um, that is the success measure and metrics, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That in that particular case, the yeah, okay. the outcome is, I would say, is the actual metrics. Okay. I'm pleased to hear you say this because. Uh, I've worked with councils in the past where uh, you come up with a laundry list of things, and I can tell you from experience, it's terribly underwhelming. You know, you, there's just so much there, you can't possibly make headway on most, if not all. But, so doing a handful of things and doing them well, and I think last year is a great example of doing that, of really focusing on a couple of really important principles and keeping focus the way you So the other piece, too, and How, I'm, I'm sorry, but no. just a quick question. Like, so I get what I need to do for the pieces that I added, but um, wouldn't part of this, or wouldn't it be helpful also to kind of weigh in on what other, like Chris might have wrote something I think is fantastic, or is that going to be? That's going to be included. So everybody's three will be identified. Right. Well, what if I like one of Chris's and it's not in his top three, but it's in my, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cool. Like I might, like his, he, for him it might be, oh, this is only my fourth favorite. Well, but if you put, yeah, I'm you, only two, how many done mine, I thought? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Pick the best one. Top three yeah, all you, around. Yeah, top three doesn't matter. Oh, I thought, so I thought that's I why if you look on this page. I thought you said mine. Yeah. No, if you look on this page, there okay. are no identifiers. Perfect. So it's whichever one well, yeah, you I know So you want to have both an indication of which one it's ended up being preferred yes. by the number of people. Right. Yes. You might have the uh, total tax increase less than 3%. Yes. You might have seven. Well, that's seven things. So it's seven people. I'll, I'll change the graph for the next meeting. I will change this so that it'll also have a account kind of. So like I'm clear now. I thought you yeah. said no. specifically you could only come on ours. So think about this um, also, by the way, because um, there's value in having them as uh, goals, but you need to be able to identify the metrics. So when you have an open government that practices transparencies, you need to think about what you find as an acceptable metrics. How do you measure that? How do you measure that? Because part of the directive towards Tom is that, Tom, here are the council goals. Um, and by the way, the next conversation is about, and here's the weight. He then is supposed to then take, the, take that and say, yes, I have the resources. No, I don't. And if I don't, how am I going to pay for it or find them? And come back to us so that we can either change our goals um, or redefine it so that um, based upon whatever resources he does have. So that's not overburdensome. Well, keep in mind, this, uh, this comes up in the funny, but these are your goals there, and it's only mine. Right. I've said that, I'm here to help support you in meeting your goals. So I appreciate there's a practicality as part of this, but there's also things that are incumbent on you to do. I mean, uh, transparency in your operations is as much your responsibility as mine. I can ensure that you have a proper meeting notice, that it's televised, I can do those sorts of things, right. but right. more of it's on you than me. Yeah. However, restructuring, restructuring HR policies for compensation and planning is critically dependent upon you and your resources. Right. right. So, with that, yes, Sean, before you move on, so something we've done in the past is we kind of have had like uh, value statements, as in, like, we like affordable housing, we like pres preservation of historic buildings. Um, is there going to be a room for that to kind of include some of the things that we think are important but may not? rise to the level of those things that we want to measure. Yeah, and actually I didn't include it. So last year on the very last page, there were like eight items. Yeah, they're called initiatives and other issues. So I can include that as part of the Great. Yeah. So like last year we had historic preservation, affordable housing, senior services, strategic planning, or something. So yeah, I can include that for sure. Yeah. Great. So the other piece to this, so we're going to go through this part of the process. The question also then is, um, is to really um, place weights to each of the goals that you set. Because that should drive, um, both from a leadership perspective, but also from our own work, work, drive which ones that we try to accomplish first. So as an example, and I didn't put any one particular, you know, is budget the most important, and therefore it's going to be measured 50%. Um, now keep in mind, they can all be 33 to third percent, 33.167, whatever the number. Yeah, you know. Um, it, based on that um, kind of uh, perspective. 
uh, what is the most important of the three goals? So, right, pick the top three, write a metric, and then assign a weight. So um, yeah, but only to the overall, not the individual piece. Core. The core piece. So it's communications. Core. Gotcha. We're 30, 50, 20, uh, 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 80, 10. I mean, so if you thought that all three had equal importance, yes. you'd give a third, a third, a third. Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Because that is, it can be hard to Correct. say what the weight is. Yeah. But because, but think about this. Um, so a lot of, um, and the reason is that um, this is what should change from year to year in your goal setting. If you set good goals, the goals will stay the same every year. Your metrics will change on how you achieve it. And then you change the, 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 the weight because you've achieved what you've been achieved. So you, you've achieved what you've been trying to achieve. So if budget, if we hit another home run in the fourth year, does that really need to have 50% of our attention if we've got it down packed? Maybe we switch and put communications as 50% because we feel that that actually needs the attention more than budgeting. So, Some of the things, uh, uh, I didn't actually understand what people meant. So the metrics, forcing people to put down some indicator of yeah. what, what in specific terms you try and achieve would help me and maybe I would change my mind about what I thought was the top priorities once I saw that. So maybe that's when we come back together, we'll see that. We'll have the ones that have the highest priority, but those that fell just shy will still be on the table in the sense of now, gee, maybe we appreciate it. And, and what I'll do on this one here is actually, um, for that next meeting, is that I'll show everyone's layout um, and see if there's any pattern. Because you can derive an uh, analytical pattern from that. Um, and then, oh, oh, oh what did I do? And last, um, it's really identifying the sources. I just want to show you have a picture there. Of war. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's a funny story. Later. So these are really, I, I was talking with Tom, you know, what are the resources? The only reason why I put me up there is because, you know, being a chair, there's a lot of uh, um, communication that goes through the chair and a lot of uh, goal setting. Um, and Mary Tyler Morris, because believe it or not, I could not find um, I think, of, of all things, uh, memorable about strong women um, is I could not get a picture of Jackie. It's funny. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> she works very well with that. No, there is not. That's how I stole all the other ones was from the websites. So, uh, but it's really, it's really the quote. Coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. And if you think about it, um, we've, we're now getting to that working together is successful. And we're achieving what, we're, what we want. And then last, this is just a, you know, uh, we started off the conversation uh, with this um, the issue of indiv individual contribution and it really should end also because it's about what we give to the process and how much we are engaged. Because if we're not engaged and if we're not contributing, then um, what do they say, uh, garbage in is garbage out? You know, so if you're not contributing to the process, um, then you're not going to get an outcome that you might appreciate because you weren't heard, you weren't part of that. And so the only way that we can all be part of that is to participate and be open to everyone's um, input. And, and I think we're doing, we're doing a better job at that. We really do. Um, to me, that is the last slide with 10 minutes to go. Comments for me, um, what I need to do to make you happier for the next round. Um, anything I can do, not do. I need that presentation again because it's not coming. Absolutely. Yeah. What I probably will do, if you don't mind, is that I'm actually going to go home and um, um, update the red, blue, and green buttons. So um, based on our outcome conversations and the statements that we have, that, but you'll have it by tomorrow. And, and then if you can, that is up on the website. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Or I'll be up to the phone. Other than that, any. Any other issues? Do you want this stuff back? So you tomorrow. Ah! No. Um, I mean, if you can get it to next week is an off week because uh, we have council this week, right? Yeah. Try to look that. Uh, so maybe next week, if you can get me your responses by next week, and then I can. Right now, our workshops are kind of full. Why? Um, if you can get it to me by Wednesday at 7 p.m. Next Wednesday. Yeah, I like very specific. Yep. Wednesday, 7 p.m. would be awesome. 
Um, and then I'll, I'll work with Tom about and get to everybody because it took forever. And, and really, we want to do a kind of a quick turnaround on that next phase only because um, we're hitting February and that's already the end of the first quarter. Yeah. You know, we're three months in there, we're only getting goals done now. So, good. Thank you for everybody who came. Thank you, cameraman. Appreciate it. All right. We are adjourned. Or it's not adjourned. We're just, um, we're done.